Already rolling, mate. Oh, mate, I'm just out of breath here. <laughs> just been winding down. Welcome back. Monday's video on the Monday. I'm out of breath, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So, busy day again. Been reboring the V6, the 2.8. This one. Yeah. You've been finishing the cross flow. Yeah, been on the cross flow. We've been boxing up everything to go to CTM. Yes. So we've got the got two Figaro cranks, which have got to be ground because we can't grind them. Got the Cologne crank flywheel clutch. We have indeed. And front pulley. Oh, that's balancing. it. I've I've been balancing the rods and the pistons today with, oh, for yeah, this. Oh yeah, you have. We need to get that, uh, one, one of them in each as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for, we always balance the pistons, uh, balance the com rods and size them. Size them first, they're about half a foul tight. Yeah. And then we send one piston assembly from bearings up to rings, a whole lot, um, up with the crank flywheel clutch front pulley yeah and then they so we, work it out the v6 and v8 anything anything plane, plane, yeah basically we can't balance because well we could but we haven't done the setup with the bob weights yeah, and everything that's to, it and it's just easier at yeah. the minute anyway to get it sent up there so. exactly mate so yeah just finishing that john is just honing out the v8 V8 that I did last week. Yep. Started doing the blasting and that on the Figaro stuff. One of the blocks is in there. So as soon as that's done, mate, I can start boring these blocks and get this done this week, hopefully. Nice. Crossflow's looking stealthy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Black on black. Black, black on black. A little bit of silver at the on front. On black. Yeah. On black. Lovely. Yeah, it looks nice. Got the little Barham engines gel sticker, sticker on there. Sticker on there, isn't it? Yeah. Which, so, I'll, uh, which I'll be doing exactly that to the um, the Escort Mark 1 rocket yep. cover when Stuart takes that off in a minute. Yep. Exciting. So, and, yeah, just, um, um, so yeah, it looks nice, mate. Yeah, a li few little bits. Like, I need to get a set of core plugs, just, you know, odds and ends like that. But And we need to get a very sturdy wooden box. We do. To put this in, because this is going all the way to Cyprus. Yes. So, um... Yeah, I'll be seeing the end of this, mate. As we will the Lotus, hopefully this week. Yeah, that just needs um, it just needs uh, something of rocker cover, really. Yeah, that's and, it. And it's... you know, same again, core plugs, all the little little bits like that. But and the same with the Cosy. Just got to time it up. Yeah. Put the sump on, fix the rocker cover on, and that'll be um, done for Steve. Just in time for another two Cosworths turning up. Yep. This week. I do. One from Spain. One from the UK. So it'd be nice to have another couple of cozies. I yeah. always feel a little bit bare when I'm out of cozies. Yeah. No, but yeah, that'd be nice, mate. That'll tide us over. So once those three are gone, we've got that disco there, 300 TDI. We have indeed. We'll be turning up for that tomorrow or Wednesday. Yeah. The two V6s, the BDA. Exactly. Yeah, the BDA, uh, when Charlie sends that box back full of the stuff done there, which will probably be a week's time. He's going to send the crank back to the BDA in the same box so we I can do. crack on with that BDA, isn't it? Proper. And then I think we've got some inquiries about, we had one about a 4.4 Mustang, mm -hmm. a 2008 one. Yeah. Uh, what else was there? I can't remember now. Something or other. We've got a couple of, we've got a two, couple of V8s in the shed yeah. to do, mate. Yeah, we do. A couple in the container. We've got, but we've had, yeah, we've had a few inquiries on the um, website as we've well. We've got plenty on, nice. haven't we? A little update, quickly, before I go on to something a little bit more important. Quick update on the, um, on the projects. We sort of almost decided that we're going to build another engine, aren't we, mate? Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Whether we stick Definitely it to one side. Definitely build it, whether we use Definitely it. Definitely build it, because we've got half the bits. Yeah. Um, so we've had a chat with Charlie, and he's going to hopefully supply the bits that we don't need. Or we do need, sorry. Bits we ain't got. Bits we ain't got. So we have got a 200 block, which we're going to long stud. We, that's in the box to be line honed. Yes. Um, because one of the caps doesn't look too clever. But I'm going to long stud that. Potentially put liners in it. We'll have a little look. Basically go through that block. Um, I've got a crank. Got rods. Got pistons. Actually got, yeah, we've got the pistons. Charlie was going to supply a cylinder head. And maybe port it and we'll build a normally aspirated. Yeah. 
Well, you've got options. If you get the and bottom end done... potentially stick it in the yellow one, isn't it? Maybe, yeah. But if you get the bottom end all sorted yeah. and get a head sort of ready to go, then you can do either, really, whether yeah, you want to do it, a yeah. turbo build or an NA. But either, really. If someone, think... wants, if someone wants a Cosworth and they haven't got a donor, give us a shout before we decide to pop it in one of the cars. But yeah. I'm going to see how we get on with this cross flow because I've always, part of me, wants to stick with the cross flow, really. I like that little, that 1700 cross flow. Yeah. I mean, I... look at them. They're a neat little motor. Oh, very still. neat. Tiny. But I just get... can't believe how talky that one in the other car is. It's pretty is. quick. I'm, what I'm going to do is, when Stuart's took the rocker cover off that, I'm going to measure the lift and see what cam we got in there. Yeah. I'd be quite interested to see got um, the, um, what's in it because oh. that'll sort of tell us roughly what power we're going to be running in now. Well, yeah. But you can get good power out of them, good mm. revs, you know. And, and they're um, solid and loads of bits for them and easy to build if you ever need exactly. to. Exactly, I like, I do like the little cross flow. So yeah. yeah, plenty of options, mate. But what I want to go on to, a bit more, something a bit more important, and this is aimed more, I would say, towards the DIY engine builder at home. I'm well, talking about, what do you think I'm talking about? The cylinder head we had yeah. this morning. Yeah, we have a, have a few little things with cylinder heads, don't we? We do, yeah. Of... Um, the reason I'm mentioning this is because we've had, we have had people do little tests on motors that they think are going to be reliable, but it's not actually... Well, it's, it's fair play to them because they're doing their, you know, they're really thinking about what they're doing. Yeah. So they're, in sometimes that sense, you can think you... a little bit too much. Though. Well, you can, yeah. And sometimes you do, you know, things that might make sense to you, but really it's not like a typical thing that's done no that's it and also the other way around sometimes yeah. we can overlook things and um so what i'm talking about mate is actually the cylinder head's gone so i can't show you on that particular head but we'll take this one this is a um, the other lotus swing cam. swing cam this is actually not a great example because the valves are slightly different but what the customer was doing it's on a two liter audi tt turbo yeah which we did all the machining for a year or so back. Mm. Um, the build's been very slow anyway, but it's, it's, he's going to be running big pass. We've got hybrid turbo, high lift cams, ported, all the rest yeah. of it. And what he'd done was he was getting himself in a little bit of a tiz because he's put the head on without the cams in, out any, without any manifolds, anything like that. Yeah. And what he was doing was putting air pressure into the cylinders via the plug hole yeah. spark plug hole and he was putting liquid or whatever down the, down the ports port. on the back of the valves um, and he was actually pumping i think he was pumping between half a bar to a bar of pressure so we're talking not, seven not to 15 loads, psi so, yeah. of pressure into the cylinders um, and it was bubbling up through the valves looking down the ports if you like so you think about the pressure coming down the plug hole, filling this up with seven to 15 yeah. PSI, and then looking down these ports and it was with fluid in on the back of the valves, it was, see it was bubbling slightly. Bubbling. Which in fairness, you know, when you do that, you think, well, that can't be right. So like, you yeah. know, fair play to him in thinking that, but. Exactly, so I, I tried to explain to him, this was at the very beginning, that potentially what happens is, and it's a little bit the same sort of thing as we've heard in the past where people pour will have a cylinder head off and they will pour paraffin or what have you in the cylinders and it disappears. Yeah. And they worry that the rings aren't doing anything. But what I tried to explain is, same with the air pressure, with a little bit of air pressure, what could be happening or what evidently was probably happening is it's creeping behind the valves and basically just enough to bubble the fluid under a compression stroke of the engine running. It's gonna, that's not going to be it's happening. It's going to close those valves good yeah. and proper, isn't it? So it's not that the valves are not seating correctly because we had we had it in here we've, we've tested the in. valves we stripped the valves out we've checked them you know obviously made sure everything's clean seating well lapped in seats were cut anyway with a three-phase cutter um, and the vacuum it was going right up in the green so yeah our vacuum tester if you haven't seen it before all it is is this here they recommend in the actually in the manual it says although the green starts up at about 550 which they say is okay, in inverted commas, they reckon on a two valve per port, so like a 16 valve, where yeah. you've got four valves in one pot, anything above 400 is acceptable, which so, means when it's running, 
it's fine. Yeah, so that the green area is basically, that's green if it's like a single valve per port. Yeah, job, it, yeah, really. I mean, ideally into the green, but anything above 400 is gonna be, well, isn't gonna create an issue, put it that way. And to be honest, most the 16 valve stuff or two valves per port goes right up past the green anyway, doesn't it? Exactly, so. yeah. You know, if you've got a perfect seal, there's no reason why it won't just continue. If I put my finger over that to create a perfect seal, you'll see it go up, look, way through the green. So that is ideal. That means yeah. it's a perfect seal, no problem whatsoever. Yep. But if I just let some air through, look, you see it'll just, it's sort of the more the gap you give it. Um, and when, the way they demonstrated this, when they come out, is they actually put a, they had a perfect seat where it vacuumed straight into the green. And they actually put a human hair on the seat, yeah. shut the valve and it wouldn't vacuum at all, mm. which means chances are you're gonna get a misfire. Yeah. Um, so back to uh, the problem we had with this customer is he had put some fluid through the port onto the back of the valve, put between half a bar and a bar, which is seven to 15 PSI-ish, um, and it was bubbling at the back of the valve. And he thought, yeah. well, if it's, his theory was, if it's bubbling at that pressure, the more pressure, the more it's gonna bubble, but actually not. It's, yeah, it's kind of the opposite. It, it is, yeah. Once gonna... you've got 10 times that, so like 150 PSI um, of compression pushing it. Well, um, and at the rate it's, you know, you know, if an engine's even just idling at six, 700 RPM, it's like, that's it, you know, yeah. You've got that compression six or 700 times a minute, so. Yeah. I mean, we've had heads in here that have overheated, for instance, there's still no misfire. It's just done a head gasket. That's the only reason the head's off. When we vacuum the valves, they're below 200. Yeah. So anything over zero, really, prob the chances are you're not gonna get a misfire. Yeah. But when it's zero, it could be infinitely, um, the gap could be infinitely big. So yeah. there's a chance that you're gonna get a misfire. Basically, this chap, seen these bubbles and thought the opposite to what actually is going to happen. So like I say, we've had it before where people do a test with the head off, they put fluid paraffin down the bores um, and it overnight it sort of goes away and they think... Well, in fairness, it's like, you know, you see bubbles, you, you think, well, those valves are leaking. In fairness, you know, thinking sort of along the right lines. And yeah, it's good exactly, to be, yeah. you know, good to be, stay on top of it and think about those things exactly, when you're building. Yeah. But sometimes you can think too far into something. Yeah, you can, yeah. And the reality is, it's all not that complex. No. So with, with what I said to him was, because of the, the small amount of pressure, it's creeping up around the radius of the back of the valve and just, just a bubbling bit out. Just coming through, yeah. Um, but with a higher, com if you put higher pressure in there, the chances are it'll push the valve shut and that air won't yeah. go out. Because all it's doing is it's, you've got the pressure around the back of the valve versus the spring tension. Yeah. Um, so that's what I tried to explain to Well, him. it's gonna look for the easiest way out of that cylinder, isn't it? If it even yeah. if it's only ever so slightly pressurized. It's... Exactly. So he wasn't convinced by that. He's took the head off again, brought it in today. Straight away, I've stuck the vacuum tester on each valve. It's gone bang straight through to 800. So yeah. it's absolutely perfect. So I said to him, conclusion is put it on. Don't worry about your tests. Well, it's just go. It reminds me a little bit of a while ago, you made a video and, and said about people rocking forged pistons in the bore Have and that thinking quite they've regularly. got 25 hour bore, you know, we piston have that to all wall the time, clearance. don't we? Yeah. They say, it's God, there's a hell of a lot of play, and but it's fair they play don't realize them. that a piston is not it's, shaped parallel. But it's, it is fair. I, think, I still think it's fair play to them for being vigilant and having a look and, yeah. you know, checking for themselves, even if the tests they're doing aren't necessarily the right test, yeah. but it's good to be a bit it's good, yeah. thinking about it. But. but it doesn't, as I say, if it doesn't hurt to just ring people like ourselves or, I mean, oh, we've anyone. done it when we're unsure on an engine, we'll ring someone that's more familiar with that type of engine yeah. and get, you know, little hints. Um, so we actually, we did it today, didn't we? We spoke to Scott, yeah, who had been involved with one of these Lotuses and had a problem um, and we didn't realize. We'll show you actually, because it's the only thing we're waiting for now on this Lotus. Um, so the problem he had was this tube, which the old it's one- in one of these drawers here. There it is. There you go, this one's knackered. So we're waiting for some new ones. Um, but this rubber tube here goes between the block and the head and it's a return 
Is it a return or a breather? I'm a not return, sure. I think. One, yeah, probably a return. And basically, the, the way it seals is in the on the head. It seals on this mating surface there to the yeah. to the mating surface on the head. And we didn't realise uh, that if you're not careful on modified gaskets or aftermarket gaskets. Light a minute. You can see better here, look, where the head isn't. You've got this bit here where originally it would have been cut out. Um, you can see it just under here, look, and that intrudes in the, the sealing surface for this rubber thing. So if you don't yeah. get rid of that bit of gasket, Which this thing's not going to, so it's going to leave two gaps either side and the oil dribbles out. Yeah, so we are going to have to sort that out, but yeah, we should so, be able to do that. Yeah, no so trouble. we'll have to um, and I know nibble that gonna, out. People are going to say, should do that while the head's off, like, you know, put the piece of pipe in, but I've done it a couple of times now, and to be honest, it's not too bad. No, it won't just damage gotta, the head. You've just got to make sure you can look down through there, just check that it's all sort of seated inside. That's it, yeah. And the same, look up through there and check it's all in there, all right, but... Exactly, yeah, so it's a bit difficult. Yeah, so um, we'll have to sort of... Um, that's the advantage of them out. being rubber, you can get them in there without... Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's it. I suppose moral of the story is just if you're not, if you're if unsure, you're sure. don't drive yourself nuts. Just give someone a ring that's yeah, give more familiar ring, with that someone. type of thing. Yeah. Because you could be overthinking it or you could be underthinking it. Or you could be bang on. Exactly. But yeah. But there we go, mate. For today's video, mate, that is it. Yeah. And we'll see you in another one. Thanks, guys. Yeah.